What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for February 23rd, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Feel Good Friday edition of the podcast. If I'm a little out of the loop today, that is because I'm out of my comfort zone. Many of you, I'm sure, probably listen to me on your way to work. If you don't know, I do work from home. I am an administrator at a cyber school for elementary. And basically, I'm not used to leaving the house. And that's my day job. Do podcasting before and after. Um, Lots of just prep work and everything. But I have to go into the main office today in King of Pressure. So I'm a little just out of my element timing-wise and things like that. So if it is a little bit jumpy, I, I do apologize. But it's Friday. Everything's going to be A-OK. Uh, and I saw some 60-degree uh, days next week. So may have to try to get out and uh, at least get nine holes in somewhere. But enough of that. As always, let's start with a recap of yesterday's question of the day. I asked you, what are your expectations for the Sixers? And almost, I guess, kind of what I expected Everybody was all over the place, uh, anywhere from the playing tournament to a deep run. But the general consensus was, and the general feeling, it's it all depended upon Joe's health and his knee. And I know, um, and I, I don't know how much stock you put into this, but I was listening after uh, my son's basketball practice on the way home, and I caught some of uh, Howard's uh, Eskins. I guess he does whatever he does after the. Either way, and he was saying about how the Sixers were mailing out playoff invoices um, and whether or not that is shady upon them because they know Joe's not going to be back. Um, I I don't know. And I I feel like there's this whole thing with the media that it's like the team versus the media. And, And I don't know, maybe it's always been like this, but it seems like it's more prevalent than ever I mean, I don't know. I don't know if the teams owe it to us anything. And I mean, I know there's a lot of gamblers. Like I, I bet sports, but that need to know certain information. But I, I don't know. I just, it, I to get all that worked up about it. So I don't know. Um, there, there is optimism about it. But if after listening to Howard Eskin, he thinks the Sixers are being shady, and they know that Joe's not going to play. They just want to get the playoff ticket money. Uh, but if they do it anything like the Eagles, if they're the Sixers are somehow miss out on the playoffs, which isn't necessarily the way they've been playing out of the realm of possibility, that they, they don't gain anything by getting the money. Yeah, they might get some interest, but uh, by holding the money. But I don't know. And, and that just a little rant, something that came in. But as always, thank you for participating in the question of the day. There will be another one later in the show. Might as well stick with the Sixers since we were already talking about them. A 110-96 loss to the Knicks last night. Kyle Lowry had 11 points in his Sixers debut. He also caught an elbow and needed to get stitches. Um, <clears throat> just still, the Sixers were playing shorthanded, got behind early. They did close it to six with like eight minutes left. Um, in the the fourth quarter and then just sort of felt sort of fell apart um, again they're, they're shorthanded the Knicks have just played them well and that's the one thing that makes me nervous because if the standings stay the way they are that's who the Sixers t- right now would play um, they're up one game though on the Pacers for the sixth spot uh, the six or the Sixers are in the fifth spot Pacers are in the six. Uh, Sixers have one game up on them. They are in action again tonight against the Cavs. Uh, a tough game. <clears throat> uh, no word on whether DeAnthony Melton is going to return. But at this point, they need all the reinforcements they can get. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Looking forward to, to watching and relaxing and not having a lot to get done tomorrow and watching that game. But Sixers lost 110-96, and we're... Just anxiously waiting just any kind of update on on Joe's name. All right. I've been telling you about Back to the Future and how I'm kind of making it an interview slash special show platform. I did sit down with Brian Michael, the producer of A League Apart, the exhibition on the legacy of the Negro Leagues in the Philadelphia area. Go check that out. 
I had a great time, learned a lot from him. So go to Back to the Future with a PH, wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. And just there's just so much Negro League history in Philadelphia. And I mean, everybody kind of knows the stars, but it goes way deeper than that. So be sure to check it out. They also are having an event on uh, Wednesday, uh, roundtable discussion. Milt Thompson's going to be there. They're going to talk about uh, just some of the, the people that are focused in the exhibit. Um, it's from 6.30 to 8.30, I believe. Uh, I'll be going, um, but check out the link in the description if you have any interest in going. Maybe I'll see you there. If you do go, come by, say hello. Um, speaking of the YouTube, to stay in the loop on what's happening, just subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll stop asking you, I promise. Uh, but I'm trying to get up over 100 subscribers because the algorithm, as I'm learning... The algorithm means a lot. And so reviews and subscriptions and likes, all of that plays into it. And if you ever like are watching YouTube or listening to a podcast and you see they say, hey, you might like this or recommendations. If we can get in there um, from some like-minded people, that'll help us grow and expand. And I keep mentioning it, but everybody keeps asking about live shows and the, the bigger it gets, the better chance we can do to have live shows. So be sure to check that out. Quick recap from yesterday, too. I always like to to kind of go through and, and make sure I'm giving you the correct information. Uh, we talked about Zach Clayton and playing for the New York Rens. And uh, he did win the World Professional Basketball League's first tournament. Uh, or we said about they won the tournament in 1939. Him and Tarzan Cooper were on that team. And the 1939, 1939 tournament was the first one. I know I was a little unsure on that. Be sure to buy your Girl Scout cookies from Ella. Time is running out on that. The description is in the link. Um, and finally, last announcement. The Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame's ballot for the 2024 induction class is up and out. And while the fans don't necessarily have a say in who gets inducted, they're pleased to give the megaphone to fans to get their thoughts heard as well, which could technically, <clears throat> excuse me, or not technically, potentially influence future ballots. Go to phillyhall.org backslash fans, vo fans voice that's phillyhall.org backslash fans voice. Fill out a ballot, and if your ballot comes closest to the official induction class, you get two VIP tickets to the ceremony in November. The deadline is March 8th, so just go phillyhall.org backslash fans voice. Get your voice heard for a chance to win two free tick VIP tickets to the ceremony in November. Uh, flyers are off. Uh, they're currently in sixth position in the East. It's it's going to be a fun next few weeks for the Flyers, and I think it's going to be make or break with the All-Star break, but they're in action tomorrow against the Rangers. Now, I mentioned the other day Villanova is the only shot for the men's side uh, for a Philadelphia team barring St. Joe's, LaSalle, or Temple going on a ridiculous run and even Drexel and winning their conference tournament. Uh, so we'll keep, we will be keeping a bubble watch on Villanova. But you've probably missed this, but the Temple women are pretty good, and they have a legitimate shot to, to win the AAC. Uh, they beat uh, Texas San Antonio last night, the Roadrunners, 56-48, to and they currently sit atop the American Conference standings. So it's worth noting, and we will continue to keep an eye on my, my Temple women. Um, maybe they can show the men's team how to to get it done. But shout out to the Lady Owls. Let's keep that momentum rolling and give us something to root for in March Madness. But Temple Women up top of the AAC standings uh, after beating the uh, Roadrunners from Texas San Antonio last night. Uh, so it's worth keeping an eye on those Owls. Some Phillies news as they get ready and prepare for tomorrow's. Um, so excited for that. And it's not on TV, I know, but um, very excited for spring training baseball to start. Uh, but the Major League Baseball Network um, announced their top 100 players um, for, I guess, I, don't, see, I never understand how those lists work. Is it the top 100 players from last year? 
Is it the top 100 players for this year? Is it sort of just something to get us talking about it? I don't know, but the Phillies did have five players on the top 100 list. Kyle Schwarber was 57, JT Real Muto 46, Zach Wheeler was 28, Trey Turner was 16, uh, and Bryce Harper was 11th. And again, I don't know if it's based on last year. What do they think this year? Combination of the two. I don't know, but I guess the big thing and, and the, I noticed was Aaron Nola was not on there. And that is our question of the day. Is Aaron Nola one of the top 100 players in Major League Baseball? And I mean, I... I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and name you 100 baseball players, but I think there's a legitimate argument to put an Aaron Nola in there, uh, especially just because of how consistent he is. I know he drives us crazy at times where he goes into his quote-unquote slumps, which uh, many players would probably die to have the, their career best be his slumps. But and, and we're definitely spoiled with him. But is he a top 100 player? Let me know. 267-495-8531. Get you in on the voice and text line. And then the other question I, I kept hearing uh, and seeing, it was, was Bryce too low? So let me know that too. We're going to do two Phillies questions today. Is Aaron Nola a top 100 player? And is Bryce a top 10 player? Or should Bryce be a top 10 player? 267-495-8531. Send me a voicemail. Send a text message. Let me know what you're thinking. And I do have to give a shout out. Um, yesterday, uh, one of our loyal listeners and a good friend of mine, uh, Scott, brought up the fact when I was talking about the uniforms that when George Costanza changed the uniforms for the Yankees in Seinfeld, the Yankees went on a nice little run. So maybe the Phillies can uh, rally around the, the uniform uh, debate and debacle, whatever you want to call it, and, and maybe come out hot and, and really just set the tone with the Braves. Who knows? Uh, but thank you, Scott, for that. I actually laughed out loud when you said that because I completely forgot that he changed it. And it was kind of similar. They were complaining that it was too hot. Um, so maybe maybe it's not Major League Baseball. Maybe if one of the, the Phillies uh, clubhouse managers are listening, maybe you can kind of sneak some of the old uniforms in there without anybody knowing and give us a little bit of an edge going into the season. All right, Eagles news. And nope, I'm not going to do it. I told you we need to put the Eagles on the back burner. There's too much drama surrounding this team that's just ridiculous at this point. Um, so we're just going to put them on the back burner. Um, I was listening, and this is not necessarily, well, it is Eagles related, but I was, uh, started listening on my run today, the New Heights podcast, the latest one, and uh, Jace, they had uh, Bo Allen and Chris Long on and just forgot how awesome those three dudes were. And uh, I had completely forgotten until my buddy told me about it, about Bo Allen just in general. Um Definitely, but it just seemed like it was fun and it was good reliving. And I feel like at this point we need to put the Eagles on the shelf because the next big story I want is going to be whether or not Jason Kelsey is retiring. And that's the way it should be heading into free agency. But I'm not going to dive in. I'm not going to give, I'm not going to do what everybody thinks I'm going to do. Um, but all that being said, we can't put them on the back shelf because that's what we do. Go to phillygoat.com and get that Agri Birds fan shirt uh, designed by a local South Philly artist. Uh, check her out as well. All of the stuff is on phillygoat.com, but it's the Angry Birds fan t-shirt, and it really just looks a lot like what we do and how angry we were this year. Um, so go to phillygoat.com, get your Angry Birds fan shirt, Get your stuff ready for St. Patty's Day. Get a pair of the McGillans. I'm telling you, those things are hot. Uh, I totally want to. I can't wait to buy a pair of them. I, I'm literally probably going to end up buying uh, before the end of the summer. I will have every pair of those canvas loafers. But go check them out. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. Get the Angry Birds Fan t shirt designed by Olivia Smith. Uh, you can check her out. Uh, she has a ton of artwork, a local artist. But to get the Angry Birds fan shirt to go along with your McGillan 
canvas loafers for St. Paddy's Day and use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. And that's all we're going to talk about the Eagles for today. All right. On this day, we're going to go back to 2010 and Philadelphia University, now known as Jefferson University, beat Goldie Beacom College 76 to 65. And this was legendary coach Herb McGee's 903rd win. Uh, all of them happened at Textile slash Philly U slash Jefferson U. Um, spent his whole entire, like he played there, was an assistant there, and then coached there before he retired. This win was important because 903 pushed him past Bobby Knight as the all-time wins leader in NCAA history for all divisions. And it's kind of a forgotten time that at one point Herb McGee was the all-time leading wins as far as to win total coach in all of NCAA basketball history. Uh, he won the national championship in 1970, inducted into the Naismith Hall of Fame in 2011. He ended his career with 1,144 wins, which is uh, second all-time on the men's list behind Coach K. He became only the second man or second men's coach to win a thousand games, and he did it nine days after Coach K did it. So they it was they were kind of back and forth, neck and neck, um, and Coach K overtook him, and that's why Coach K is at the top of the list. But even more impressive for Herb is he is fourth all time all in all of the NCAA men's and women's in wins. Um, Tara Vanderveer is one. Gino Oriema, who is another local guy, um, head coach at UConn, Coach K, and then it's Herb McGee. So the shot doctor won his 903rd game t- on this day in 2010, temporarily making him the all-time winningest coach in all of the NCAA. He is second in the men's list and fourth all-time men's and women. Uh, just an impressive guy, and I did do a Back to the Future feature on. Be, uh, hold on, Back to the Future feature on Herb. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Uh, go through the archives. But on this day, it was win number nine oh three when Philly U beat Goldie Beacom seventy six sixty five down in East Falls. All right, finally today, our Philly Sports Black History Spotlight is Louis Santop. And he was one of the first legitimate superstars of the Negro Leagues. And we all know, like jo- the Josh Gibsons, the Satchel Pages, um, and even Jackie Robinson played a little in the Negro Leagues. But he, Louis Santop, was one of the first legitimate stars. Um, he was a catcher, and he was known as also, um, and this is somebody else's quote, uh, he was black baseball's first legitimate home run slugger. Originally from Texas, he played one year for the Philadelphia Giants, uh, but he is widely known in this area for his time with the Hilldale Daisies. Uh, He was just, not only did he hit for power, but he routinely hit in the high three, low 400s for average, won three pennants, including the 1924 Colored World Series while at Hilldale. Uh, Before games, he would put on exhibitions just showing um, just how great of an athlete he was, uh, whether it was, and they seemed to do a lot of this, um, men, women, black, white, didn't really matter. Just like uh, almost, and I I know this is going, two Seinfeld references in in one podcast is just unheard of, but almost like the feats of strength or uh, whatever they called it for Festivus, like just show how far they could hit a ball, how far they could throw a ball, just how fast they could run. Um, and <clears throat> Santop was one of those guys that just, uh, because he knew he was athletic, it was a good way for him to make money and help bring awareness to the Negro Leagues. Um, he was known, and everybody knows Josh Gibson uh, as the, the Black Babe Ruth is his nickname, but Louis Santop was the first Black Babe Ruth. He was the original, I guess, um, just because of how met, how great he was hitting the ball. Uh, and his team used to, uh, played a couple exhibitions against some of the Major League Baseball teams in the offseason, and in a 1920 exhibition game against the Yankees, uh, he actually out hit Babe Ruth. 
uh, in that series or in that game, he went three for four, while Babe Ruth went 0 for four against the Negro League pick, pitcher. Uh, another thing about Santop in 1917, he had six hits in a three game exhibition series against the Philadelphia A's. So he had six hits off of Joe Bush and Chief Bender, who is a Hall of Famer. Uh, so just one of the greatest to ever do it, the first real superstar. Uh, he had that marketing power and kind of paved the way for guys like Josh Gibson. Um, but Philly Hall of Fame, uh, or Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame, Baseball Hall of Fame, and just one of the great Negro League players. Today's Philly Sports Black History Spotlight is Luis Santop, uh, and he just was, he could do it all. I mean, he was a great, he was good on defense, but that wasn't the story. The fact that he could hit for power, hit for a high average, and, and really pave the way and help to put some of these guys on the map. Uh, Louis Santop is today Philly Sp- today's Philly Sports Black History Spotlight. <clears throat> on this day, back in 2010, Herb McGee won his 903rd game as a coach at Philadelphia Textile, Philly University, Jefferson University. Uh, it was Philly U at the time. Uh, temporarily putting him at the top of the all-time wins list for NCAA men. Let me know what you think about Aaron Nola. Should he be in the top 100? Is um, is Bryce the top 10? So let me know. 267-495-8531. Be sure to check out your Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame ballot. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out my interview with Brian Michael. Had a good time. Uh, it's actually a really good listen. And you'll, you'll definitely learn a lot. Uh, I mean, I actually went, saw the exhibit, interviewed him and still learned stuff in the the interview so just we have a rich history um when it comes to, to to the negro leagues and it's so much more than just the philadelphia stars so check it out back to the future with a ph wherever you get your podcast all right i get to go sit in traffic now um i'm actually secretly looking forward to it but don't tell anyone but go enjoy your Friday. I'm Jim Montgomery. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.